Several state governments in India have heightened their surveillance amidst the rising cases of respiratory illnesses, especially related to human metanumovirus HMPV in India. Reports of HMPV outbreak in China have also raised concerns in relation to another health emergency and pandemic which is coming in future in the world. And moving on, India has upped its surveillance a notch following reports of rising cases of respiratory illnesses in China. In India, at least eight HMPV cases have been detected so far as of January 7th, 2025. And rampant testing is going all across different states. However, in this scenario, Union Health Minister Shri J.P. Nadaji has said that HMPV virus is not a new virus for the country and has asked people not to worry about it. Health experts have clarified that HMPV virus is not a new virus. Also, he has urged the public to take proper necessary precautions to avoid getting infected by any viral infections during this season, during this period, which are on the rise during the winter season in this country. Now, it is worth noting that HMPV virus really is not new in India. And there has been HMPV cases in India in the December 2024 as well. However, in the recent weeks, scenes of hospitals in China with the masked people have made several rounds on the social media, sparking worries of another potential pandemic in the world. Now, Beijing has acknowledged the surge in the cases of HMPV virus, a flu-like human meta virus, HMPV especially amongst the children and it is attributed to a seasonal spike. Now, is the world forcing another global health pandemic? Or is another global health pandemic around the cards? Or it is just a seasonal spike in the northern hemisphere of the world? We'll be trying to understand in today's session. Hello, my name is Preetpal Singh, and today our discussion would center around HMPV virus. Now, human metanumovirus, that is HMPV, it's a respiratory virus that was first identified in 2001 by Dutch researchers. Now, despite its relatively recent discovery, the virus has been circulating in the world since last many decades. Now, HMPV belongs to Pneumo Verde family, which also includes other respiratory pathogens like RSV, that is respiratory synctial virus. And it usually causes symptoms similar to that of common cold or influenza. Now, in many circumstances, it often causes upper respiratory infections, but it can also sometimes cause lower respiratory infections as well, like asthma flare-ups, pneumonia, or even chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, that is COPD. Now, the peak age of hospitalization for infants with HMPV is between 6 to 12 months, slightly older than the peak of RSV, which is around 2 to 3 months. Now, the clinical features of this HMPV is somewhat similar to RSV, that is respiratory synctial virus. And it is also an important cause of disease in older adults and infants. Now, once it is clear that what this virus is all about, what we need to understand is that how this HMPV virus transmits or how does the transmission occurs. Now, HMPV virus it definitely spreads through a close contact with the infected individuals, primarily via respiratory droplets of an individual or aerosols. And it can be released during either coughing or sneezing. And this virus can also survive on different surfaces for a shorter period of time, making hand hygiene very, very crucial, as was the case in the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the incubation period for HMPV virus, it is usually three to five days or three to six days, during which an infected person may be contagious without showing any symptoms which is why this can be problematic to detect initially and then before getting detected itself, it can transmit to different individuals. That is the problematic part with HMPV virus. And HMPV infections, they are noted to have more mortality or higher impact on children under the age of 14. And sometimes it strains the healthcare resources of the country as well. Now, while the exact cause of HMPV virus is yet not understood and still we are not clear about the actual cause that from where did this virus emanate, but there are several factors which can contribute towards its spread, which is why it is important for us to know that. Now, first thing is that there are seasonal patterns to HMPV. That is, HMPV infections are more common during winters and early spring period. 
Also, there can be several environmental factors like crowded indoor spaces with poor ventilation can also facilitate the spread of respiratory viruses like HMPV. Also, co-circulation with other pathogens like the pathogens causing other respiratory viruses like influenza, COVID-19, it may complicate the diagnosis and the treatment of HMPV virus infected person even more. Also, genetic changes have a role to play like all the other viruses. HMPV can mutate over a period of time. It can lead to more transmissibility or whirlwind stains coming up in the country. Now, since transmission is clear, let us move forward to HMPV symptoms. That what are the symptoms which can tell us a person is having HMPV virus or not? Now, a person infected by HMPV can show range of symptoms, often mimicking those of other respiratory diseases like common cold, like flu or even COVID-19 as well. The similarity between these all can make the initial diagnosis a bit difficult without the specific testing being required. Now, the most common symptoms for it, it includes cough, fever, nasal congestion, sore throat or shortness of breath. If all these symptoms are there, definitely a person needs to go to the medical professional and get checked that whether HMPV virus is still prevalent or not. Now, in most of these cases, all these symptoms are mild and they resolve in one or two weeks max. However, in some cases, in severe cases, particularly amongst the vulnerable population, it can lead to serious complications as well. And different serious complications can be either it can be bronchiolitis, that is inflammation of small airways in the lungs, which is common amongst the infants and the young adults, or it can be bronchitis, that is inflammation of the larger airways in the lungs, which is causing persistent cough and mucus production, or it can exacerbate the problem of pneumonia, that is infection of the lung tissue, which can be life-threatening in some cases also, or it can be asthma or COPD flare-up that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder flare-up, which can exacerbate existing respiratory concerns as well. Also, air infections can also be caused during this transmission of HMPV virus. Now, secondary bacterial infections of the middle ear, particularly in children, can be seen in this case, which is why it is very important for us to know that the severity and the duration of the symptoms, it may vary from person to person depending on person's age, person's immunity and also the overall healthcare status of the person. And while I've already told you that most of the people, they recover in one to two weeks, but several people like elderly or infants which are having immune system compromised or weaker immune system, they are more prone to getting a severe HMPV virus. Now, as we've already discussed, that this virus is seasonal in nature and it peaks during the winter time and early spring time which is similar to other respiratory diseases as well. And the population which is at the highest risk of HMPV infection is that of young children, older adults and individuals with weakened immune system or those who are having existing lung conditions. But the real question is, how do we diagnose this HMPV virus? That is the real question. Now, the primary diagnosis, it can be done through a person or patient's medical history, through the symptoms and the risk factors associated with the person. Now, as was done during the COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare providers, they can collect a sample from either your nose or your throat using a soft tipped swab and then the sample is sent to laboratory for the test. Now, this test can be the PCR test which was done during the COVID-19 pandemic, that is polymerase chain reaction test or it can be viral culture also and it can be used to detect the presence of HMPV virus in a person or not. Now, for individuals who are having severe symptoms and underlying health conditions as well, CT scans are usually recommended. Now, this can include chest x-rays and bronchoscopy to examine the airways for inflammation or blockages. Now, in many cases, blood tests can also be conducted to rule out other bacterial infections or evaluate immune response. Now, let's say if a person is diagnosed with this HMPV infection, now what are the treatment options available? See, one thing to note here is that currently there is no antiviral treatment or vaccine available for HMPV infection. Management of the disease primarily focuses on alleviating the symptoms. So, there is symptomatic treatment as was the case during the COVID-19 pandemic. There is symptomatic treatment available and providing supportive healthcare is the key in this case. Now, the approach of the treatment it may involve different steps. First step can be rest and hydration. Now, patients needs to be encouraged to get plenty of rest, plenty of water to support the natural healing process of the body. Also, over-the-counter medicines can be definitely helpful. For example, for reduction of fever, pain relievers like acetaminophen, ibuprofen to manage the fever and discomfort in the person. Also, nasal decongestants and saline sprays 
can be used for nasal congestions and improvement in the breathing. Alongside all these things, humidifiers can also be used. That is using the devices to add moisture to the air, which can help the irritated airways and can ease the coughing in the person. Also, different other ways like oxygen therapy, bronchodilators and antibiotics can be used to solve the symptoms one by one. And which is why symptomatic treatment, if done properly, the immune system of the person will be ready enough to fight the HMPV virus on its own. And definitely for most of the people, this HMPV virus, it resolves on their own time and the people heal naturally. However, those who are having more complications, they need to be closely monitored and they may require intensive medical support in different circumstances. Now let us understand how we as individuals can be safe and can protect ourselves from this virus or spreading of this virus. So basically, what are the prevention techniques, prevention strategies? Now first, very important strategy is having proper hand hygiene. So washing off hands frequently with soap and water, as was the case during the COVID-19 pandemic that is required, at least for 20 seconds. And that is one of the most effective way to prevent the spread of any respiratory viruses. Also, respiratory etiquette is very much required, like covering the mouth and nose while coughing or sneezing, preferably with a tissue or the elbow. It helps in containing the respiratory droplets and also use of masks as you saw in the COVID-19. Consider we should be considering wearing masks in the crowded and poorly ventilated places, especially during the peak respiratory illness seasons. Also, as we saw during the COVID-19, social distancing is the key if this virus spreads a lot in a particular area. Also, we must be avoiding touching our face regularly, refrain from touching your eyes, nose, mouth with the unwashed hands and it will prevent the transfer of virus from contaminated surfaces to the mucous membranes. And also what is required is that you have a proper ventilation system, ensure good air circulation in the indoor spaces by opening up of the windows or either using air purifiers or any other measure. Also self-isolation when a person is sick, that is the key. Do not go out in public. Also regular cleaning maintaining proper hygiene and strengthening of the immune health of the person overall having proper vegetables proper fruits having a balanced diet all these are the ways through which the possibility of a person getting a hmpv virus can be reduced or the possibility of a wider contamination can be reduced in the country now coming to the vaccination part now since there is no specific vaccination for hmpv virus but staying up to date with the other recommended vaccines for influenza or let's say for other pneumococcal diseases it can be helpful helped or it can be used to help reduce the burden of the respiratory illnesses like HMPV. Now this human meta pneumovirus, it shares a lot of characteristics with other respiratory illnesses like influenza and COVID-19. But there are some key differences. First key difference is in relation to mortality rate. Now HMPV generally is having a lower mortality rate as compared to the COVID-19. And people recovering from the HMPV can be seen in couple of weeks, max to max two weeks, also in three weeks as well. Now, severe cases definitely might occur in vulnerable population, but the fatalities are very, very rare as compared to the COVID-19, which was having very high mortality rate as compared to HMPV. Now, coming to the spread part, that how it can be spreading. So, HMPV virus, it usually spreads through respiratory droplets and is most common during the winter and spring, like influenza. However, COVID-19 pandemic can be spread throughout the year and definitely it is more contagious and it spreads more easily. Now, all these viruses they spread during the incubation period, where it is very difficult to gauge the symptoms, which is why it's very difficult to contain these viruses from spreading. Now, coming to the mutation part. Now, HMPV virus, it mutates very slowly than the influenza or the COVID-19, which undergoes very frequent mutations and produce new strains very regularly. And this makes HMPV virus less of a concern in terms of new transferable diseases compared to the fast evolving strains of that of COVID-19. Now, all these things being said, HMPV is definitely a very important pathogen and definitely does not have that level of global impact as what was there of influenza or COVID-19. Because vaccines for influenza and COVID-19, they have reduced the burden of HMPV. But HMPV still lacks a specific vaccine or a treatment, making prevention through hygiene and healthcare very, very crucial. And with all the discussion, one thing we can say very, very clearly now, that as of now, HMPV is having a very low risk of turning into a full-fledged global health pandemic, as was the case during the COVID-19. 
and this is being said by the Union Health Ministry and the World Health Organization experts as well. And this HMPV infection, it is a seasonal spike in the northern hemisphere of the world and there is nothing much to worry about. However, we still, as a country, we need to look at our pandemic preparedness very closely, our health infrastructure very closely and the preparedness or the training of our medical staff in order to ensure that if any such pandemic, global pandemic, it comes to our country in future, we should be properly ready to effectively and efficiently manage the global health pandemic and to ensure that the mortality are as low as possible. I hope you gained a new perspective from the session. Do let me know what are your views around the spread of HMPV virus in the country. All the very best and have a beautiful day. Thank you.